Hey everybody, it's me, Sean, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series. It is Thrones of Britannia, a Total War saga. That's right, a whole brand new Total War game. And I have been fortunate enough to have gotten a copy. This is probably the biggest game I've ever gotten a free copy of, so I'm excited to get a chance to play it. Now, I haven't played Total War since Rome 2, uh, and actually basically right when Rome 2 came out. So it's been quite a while, and I've missed out on a, on a few versions of it, so I'm excited to give it another look. Um, I have uh, kind of, I played for about 20 minutes or so to make sure that I remembered how this game works. And uh, it seems to be fairly familiar to me. So we're going to go ahead and start a campaign up here. Uh, there are quite a few different kingdoms to start as. As you can see, we're going to be playing in England uh, or the British Isles. Uh, I'm not quite sure the right way to say that, but it doesn't matter. We have a number of different kingdoms. They have different um different little benefits they have cultural features and factional features and different places to start we could start in wales we could start whatever that is we could start up there in scotland um there's normal starts and tough starts and vikings and uh different voice actors for it all but what we're gonna do is we're gonna start start as mead I guess, and we're going to start in the center of Ireland and see if we can take over Ireland, the Emerald Isle, and then move our way into England from there. It is a normal challenge. We're going to start on normal difficulty because I'm not great at this game, uh, but I do like it. It's, well, I like, like I said, I like Total War Rome or whatever. It was fun, and uh, we'll see how this one goes too. So there you go. Let's start. Oh, and there's a lot of different victory objectives too. So there's uh, different conquest and kingdom victories, fame victories, all sorts of cool stuff. So um, yeah, this game came out. Hmm. No, has hasn't come out yet. It comes out next week. Anyways, it'll be out real soon. You can buy it on Steam. Um, it is the uh, fun and excitement of Total War that you would come that you have come to expect by this long running series. So any moment now, any moment now we're gonna drop down into Flan World. Um, and here we go, uh, probably some movie. Your father, as our king, dreamed of a united Ireland. But his vision was never realized. I like the graphics, the. Now your brethren in the north hold the high kingship and you must wait your turn. Sort of. Cut out cartoonish. The Viking Oracles brings opportunity. Their strength could be yoked to your cause. Yeah, hello Viking foreigners. With them by your side, you can fulfill your father's dream whilst claiming the high kingship for your line. Whilst, huh? One throne will rule Ireland. It is your destiny to be king. It is your destiny. Thank you. I hope you guys could hear all that. Obviously, you couldn't hear it as well as you can hear me, but, you, you know. You must meet many challenges if you are to claim the title of High King. Mm-hmm. Okay. Seems obvious. All right, our first quest. Uh, we should stabilize internally before we look beyond our borders. Uh, eliminate the red rebels. Well, this seems like a standard kind of a tutorial style quest. Let's take a look around our little island here. Not island, but our little kingdom here. So, it looks in uh in britannia here it appears that you uh much like in oh do we have two armies well i didn't even notice that before um None shall stand against us. Huh, okay uh so we have uh you have your main capital here clan mcnoise noise whatever uh where we have a church and a barn and then we have a couple of minor uh, settlements. We have a, another church. Hold on, I gotta sneeze real quick. Oh boy, that was a good one. So it looks like we have a church and another church with a farm and a mine and a farm. So let's go ahead and uh, make some improvements to our things. You can see over here that, like, when we improve. This mine, it's going to cause us minus two unhappiness, but it is going to give us 10 silver production and 190 industry. So I'm pretty excited about that. So let's go ahead and do that. And that leaves us 
And if I do this, we'll get a bonus happiness, so that'll kind of ameliorate the unhappiness from that previous one. So we're left with 782, and I think I will start uh, building up this guy an army, maybe. Um, so let's go ahead and have him recruit maybe a uh, 765 for the good swordsmen. Hmm. Now, I, from what I understand, there's a big change in the way that like r units replenish and uh, replace themselves, and I don't quite understand. But you know what? Let's give this guy an elite sword industry. Even though it has a very limited chance to replenish units, 2%. So that might mean that those guys, like, are we going to start with 36 and they're going to very slowly build up? That's going to take a while. Uh, and that is what it looks like from that little yellow bar there. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's going to be interesting to see how that works out. I like how I just said interesting twice in the same sentence. But up here, excuse me, I knew about this one already. We have a standard army, the Frenzy of Kukaharang. And this is where our King Flan, General Flan, is. Um, if we look at our faction, we can see our nobles. I guess. And I know that one of these guys was a uh, was a general. I thought anyways. Justicar, Chamberlain, King's Captain, we have Carlos, Donacon, and Mert Mert uh, hmm. Can I assign him to do something? I, it doesn't look like it. He's a born governor, so I'd want to assign him to be a governor. But I th think I've already got... I think he's already assigned to be a governor. Office king. So I may not have any spots to be governed. Well, we'll, we'll figure a little more out about that. Oh, there you go. Governors. So, Mild. Mead. Um, zoom to location. Remove character from office. So I guess Aramon is the governor of Mead it seems and this guy aha there we go is uh, a statesman alright that's cool and so if I look at Aramon here he's a governor got it and he's 37 years old alright cool okay uh, but this is not what I wanted to see. What I wanted to see was our king. And I want to go to his details. Um, uh -huh. Well, that's not really important. Um, dang it. How did I just... I just went to the details of one of these guys. And I've already forgotten how I did it. There we go. Well, oh well. You know what? Who cares? I, I thought that I might have a skill that I could assign, but I don't see one. Let's go ahead and get into the fighting because fighting is exciting. So we have uh, a couple of um, standard uh, foot soldiers, a couple of javelins, which are range units. You can see over there they have missile damage. You know, these guys have um, various fighting uh, melee skills and so forth. So it looks like the Fianna band are the strong people and the spearmen less strong. And then we have javelin men, which have missile damage. And our horse boys, which is a funny uh, funny way of putting it, um, they also have missile damage. So they're going to be our strong... All right. So let's go ahead and attack, attack these rebels. Uh, I do not need to have instructions on how battle works. So we are going to go ahead and manually fight this battle so you guys can get the excitement of watching a battle unfold. I will try not to pause it too much. It should be a pretty simple battle. If you're a regular viewer, of course, you know that I love that pause button. Um, and uh, I will try to stay reasonable with it in this game. Um, I, I can get a little carried away. All right, start battle. And I am not so concerned about the weather. So we'll go ahead and start with standard weather. 
and uh, looks like hmm, this is as far out as you can zoom, huh? Okay then, I guess that's as far out as we're going to zoom. I, uh, I'm going to advance on them across this field. Ah, boy, it sure would be nice if we could zoom out further, but I forgot you can do a tactical map, so we can kind of zoom out much further. Oh, very spinny. Um, oh, and then you can zoom in on the tactical map. Nice. So, yeah, I don't, s I, you know, I was thinking I could try to approach him through here, but what point is it to take shelter behind those trees? There's really no benefit to that. So let's go ahead and go back into the normal battle screen. As a matter of fact, I don't really need to move these guys too much at all. We'll move them over there, and we'll move these guys here. And we'll set up a couple of groups. And all right, I'd say that's good. Let's go ahead and start. Yeah, thanks, Captain Obvious. Alright, so group one. Oh, I probably ought to set up a formation. There we go. And group two, set up you formation as well. Oh, you guys like to stand close to one another, don't you? There we are. Or far away from one another. And then you, your majesty, you're going to go there. I want you to walk, though. And uh, horsemen, I want you to kind of stage up over here. There we go. And let's turn that speed up. Get these guys a moving. What are the enemies up to? They're just sitting here waiting. All right, we are well out of their uh, out of their range. Looks like our soldiers have easily made their way to where they're going. Let's get everybody staged up again. All right, you guys, group one. Should move up to like right here. Group two. Like here. Have you saved some of your uh, energy? There we go. You guys, see how see how close they'll let us get. I think that might actually be within range. Don't really want these guys attacking quite yet. They're all running away. Pretty smart. Yep, stay out of range. going to turn off the skirmish mode here because I'm going to use the um, guys up front to kind of hold the line. Let's uh, speed them up to where they're going. We're pretty close to their troops, so... I do that every time. I mean, I am looking at it backwards, so I mean, it kind of makes sense that I would get a little confused, but all right, I'm going to turn that speed back up. We should be able to get fighting here soon. Looks like they're going to try to try to get their uh, horses in on me. These guys are coming over here. Yep, now I'm getting them with my javelins. I like that. All right, and they're attacking their horses, but they're going to try to bring these other horses around. Well, no, they're not really going to be very effective with them. Let's get our general up here so they're providing the morale bonus. Let's go ahead and just charge in on those guys. Although that does leave our, uh, our other javelins undefended, doesn't it? Might not be the smartest move. Oh, and those are our spearmen? Well, yeah, exactly. Oh, I thought, their, I thought their horses might come around. 
There we go. Alright, so we've chased off their uh, whatever guys. Let's see if we can fire at them. Uh oh, that's not good. They're gonna chew up our javelin with those uh, those horses. And these guys are just gonna chase each other around like idiots. I don't really want to get my uh, generals involved in the fight. But I could chase those guys. Oh, no, 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 wait. Wrong, wrong soldiers. I want you guys to... Uh, these are my swordsmen, right? Let's get my sword and spear. There we go. And what is going on here? Uh-huh. Oh, how did they end up over there? Alright, well, we're not going to be able to... Uh, we're not going to be able to run down there. Um, we're not going to be able to run down their generals. Is that a general? No, that's their javelin men? Alright, we won the battle, so let's stop worrying about it. Good job. Decisive victory in battle. Very nice. So with this, you end up with, uh, like, captives and stuff. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but then you have the option of um, uh, ransoming the captives uh, to make some money so we could make 60 gold. We could take on warriors, which would uh, lower our skill, but would get us some additional warriors. Or we can kill the captives, which um, will satisfy a thirst for blood, but the enemy will take grave exception to this. Uh, all right, and these are just rebels, so it's not really a problem if the enemy takes exception, right? So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and wipe them out. Uh, I don't really want to push into <clears throat> this guy's land. I'm not really sure who this guy is, but I don't really want to push into their land. So I'm going to pull my guys back to Kananis here uh, because they will replenish a little faster inside the town. All right, so, uh, wow, we spent all of our money, didn't we? Another little thing I'm going to do, uh, and I hope this still works, but I haven't tried it yet, um, but in the old... Um, Total War games, you would want to lower your tax level, uh, which would, would give you a big boost towards your growth. So I think I'm going to uh, just kind of lower it to the medium tax level, give us a little bit of happiness boost, and um, slow down our financial boost, but it should help our population grow, which, which should pay us off in the long run. So we're going to kind of turtle up for the first few turns and hopefully that'll be good. Uh, we've got some decent replenishment. Looks like we didn't lose too many troops in that fight. That's good. And we will give the AI their turn. And you can see little horses, and, or I guess ox-drawn carts going around uh, on the trade routes. I don't have any trade going on, but the AI does. In order to gain authority, you must consider your best way forward. Everyone from the peasants you deal with beyond your borders must know you keep your word. Uh, all right, so we have gained legitimacy, I guess. Uh, plus one loyalty and plus two melee skills for all units. Great. All right, I like that. We've got 205 gold, which is not really enough to do anything. I'm going to keep these guys in town so we can continue to replenish our troops. And there's not really a whole lot we can do, I don't think. I War declared. Oh, I see. Powis versus Sil Sis Sis whatever, that guy. And General Flan here. Okay. Does, I, I guess, doesn't have the points for me to spend. Hmm. Diplomacy, technology, economy, objectives. 
Uh, oh, we still haven't eliminated those guys, huh? Or have we? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and end the turn, because we're going to just let our economy build up a little bit before we then start uh, amassing our armies and stuff. And, I mean, you know, let's be serious. These, these games are... It's not too hard to turtle up a little bit. You have received word that the Viking Sea Kings within Diflin to our east have been mustering their forces for war. The most likely target is the, ty target is the petty kingdom of Brega. Hmm. Well, I don't think we're really in any position to go to war right now. So we're going to not get involved, and we will lose one influence if we do that, which is kind of a drag. What, is, what does influence do for us? Uh, influence represents character's political power. Your faction will gain various bonuses and penalties based on the faction leader's influence. Huh. All right, well, like I said, we got to turtle up for a little bit, so we're going to not get involved in that fight. Seems the Viking pirates who you know call themselves kings are indeed learning other ways to get what they want besides the axe sword. Oh, huh. The influence of one of your nobles now exceeds that of me. Oh. Be wary. For such power makes men susceptible to ideas above their station. Uh oh. Take steps to keep the influence of your king paramount over all those beneath him, or disloyalty may result. Huh. Okay. A nobleman that is not king may be targeted by the lower influence intrigue action to reduce their power in court. Oh, do I really want to do that? How do I... Do I see my nobles through the faction tab, I guess? So, Clerican has... Uh, has more influence than me. Statesman. Um, uh, no, no, office justice are, ah, there we go, there's a few character detail, well, I don't know that I really want to, like, sabotage my general just because he's jealous of my position. He's also very loyal. So I'm guessing that he's not really going to be a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And let's take a look at our king here. And okay, so he does have one skill point available to spend. Can I get him can I get him to regain some of that influence by using a skill point? Uh it looks like the answer to that is no. So I think I will increase his yeah, let's make him a champion. Get him a point in championship. And uh, I guess that's that. So we'll close that out. And then hopefully maybe like through battle or something, we can reestablish our influence. Our um, soldiers have almost replenished themselves. Let's see if we can go kill. Can we kill these rebels without getting in trouble with these Vikings over here? Only time will tell. Do we really need to fight out this battle, this really insignificant battle? I think I'm going to go ahead and let the uh, computer auto-resolve it. We will take an aggressive stance. Oh yeah, right through the throat. There you go. You're dead. And then we will scoot out of this neighboring territory uh, before we get into any trouble. Let's go ahead and kill those captives. And we have uh, killed their general. Um, and... Close that up. It looks like we've regained, uh, we've gained some internal stability. That's nice. And close that down. And then you up. Well, get out of the. Uh, there we go. Back into our borders. So now I don't have to worry about offending our Viking neighbor friends. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at diplomacy here, and we shall see. How do they, are we seeing the overall uh, uh, disposition of others towards us? Now, it looks like they're kind of neutral then. 
So what were we seeing? We were seeing faction ownership. There's diplomatic attitude. Okay, so they are slightly negative towards us. Dyflin. Hmm. Oh. Boy. Holy zoom. Uh, oh, there you go. Dyflin. Yeah, unfriendly and deteriorating. They have nine strength. We, on the other hand, have... Uh, 11 strength, so we're pretty close strength-wise. So I do want to be careful. It looks like Breathne is our um, most logical target. They have, we have a negative attitude towards them, and they are very weak. So we really ought to uh, look to attack them as soon as we can, and I think that we'll probably do that soon. But uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. We have uh, quite a few more turns until we can get our new mines and farms online. I'd say that once we get our um, church and mine online, then we'll start building up our army and we'll move in to attack our neighbors to the north. Uh, but for now, we're going to leave it like it is. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this. I really hope you have enjoyed checking this game out. Like I said, it will be available for sale on Steam in about a week. Uh, there is a link to the game in the description below this video. If this is your first time to my channel and you enjoyed watching this, hey, maybe consider subscribing. Uh, that's what that subscribe button is for. And if you are a longtime viewer, you know I love to hear your comments. I'd love to uh, uh, have you click that like button to let me know that you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, join me again next time. Bye!